In this lecture, we're going to look at graph interpretation and the meaning of line shapes. So we're going to calculate the area under a curve in the correct units. We're going to describe the physical meaning of the area under a curve. We're going to understand what the derivative and integral are with respect to graphical interpretations. We're going to recognize linear and nonlinear curves and know what is meant by increasing and decreasing. We want to understand the special linear cases of vertical lines and horizontal lines. We want to understand the physical meanings of the four combinations of increasing and decreasing curves with concavity, if it's up or down. We want to calculate the slope of a line in the correct units. And we want to describe the physical meaning of the slope of a line in, from the shape of the curve. So the value and units of the axes indicate the information that can be interpreted from the graph. So here I have a graph of power versus time. Um, if I multiply my watts times seconds, which is my area under the curve, I can get energy. So my energy is power times time, which is the area under my curve. We assume we have a 25, light, 25 watt light bulb that is turned on and off, uh, turned on and then turned off 15 seconds later. We want to determine the total energy. So that total energy is going to be the area under my curve, which turns out to be 375 joules. I want to determine the total energy in this graph so I can break my area up into smaller areas that I can easily calculate the area for. Um, the area of the trapezoid is slightly hard. I can make it into three triangles and a rectangle, at which I will get 275 joules. How I got that was the height of my first triangle plus the height of my rectangle uh, plus the height of my second triangle. So power is energy over time, so I want to calculate the power using the slope of my line. The slope is the rise over the run, is the change in y over the change in x. So if I have a graph of energy versus time, I can calculate the slope to be able to calculate my power. Um, so the following convey useful information about the data being graphed. Your slope of a line is your derivative, the area under your curve is your integral, and then you also have the shape of your line. So how, for example, how are acceleration, velocity, and distance related? Well, acceleration is the area under the curve of a velocity graph. I'm sorry, if you have an acceleration graph, the area under the curve is the velocity. If you have a velocity graph, the area under the graph is distance. Um, if you have a distance graph, the slope of your line is your velocity. If you have a velocity graph, the slope of your line is your acceleration. At point D, car zeta has traveled a total distance up. To calculate that, we have to calculate the area under uh, the graph for car zeta, which turns out to be 85 meters. So let's look at the shape of lines. Line shapes have meaning. A horizontal line is the variable is not changing. Your slope is zero. The area under the curve is increasing at a constant rate. If we have a vertical line, the variable is changed instantaneously. The slope is undefined and the area under the curve is undefined and is a zero. We have straight lines. We have positive or negative slope, either horizontal or vertical. So a variable is changing at a constant rate. The slope is the derivative is constant and non-zero. The area under the line is increasing. The slope, if the slope is positive, the rate of increase is increasing. If the slope is negative, the rate of increase is decreasing. If the negative slope line goes below zero, the area will begin to decrease. We have a curved line concave up is an increasing trend. Your variable is increasing at an increasing rate. Um, the slope of the curve is positive and increasing. The area under the curve is increasing at an increasing rate. We have a curved line concave down is an increasing trend. So your variable is increasing, but it's increasing at a decreasing rate. Um, the slope of the curve is positive and decreasing. The area under the curve is increasing at an increasing rate. Um, so we have a curved line concave up. This is a decreasing trend, so your variable is decreasing at a constant rate, at a decreasing rate. The slope is negative and it's decreasing in magnitude. The area under the curve is increasing at a decreasing rate. Um, and then a curved line down that's concave down, your variable is decreasing at an increasing rate. The slope is negative and it is increasing, and the area is increasing at a decreasing rate. Um, so we have a light bulb that's turned on for 15 seconds and the total energy absorbed by the light bulb is shown 
uh, in this graph. So we have an energy versus time. We're trying to find the power supply from 0 to 15 seconds. I need to calculate the area under that graph, which is the triangle area here, which is 25 watts. So between points A and B, the acceleration is. So going from points A to B, our graph here, we have velocity versus time. So acceleration is the derivative, and our acceleration is what? It is positive and constant. So we have a straight increasing line. From points B to C, the acceleration is zero because we have a horizontal line. From C to D, the acceleration is negative and constant because we have a de decreasing straight line. From points E and F, the distance is, no, this is the distance is. So from point E to F, we have the distance, which is the area under the curve. So our distance is positive and increasing. From F to G, our distance is what? So going from F to G over here, we have our distance is positive and increasing because distance is the area under the curve. And lastly, from points G to H, we have this negatively sloping down line. We're asking about the distance. Our distance is still positive and increasing. It's just increasing at a decreasing rate. So between points B and C, the acceleration of a car gamma is, so car gamma is the orange line. Between B and C, our acceleration is zero because we have a horizontal line at that point. Between point C and D, the acceleration of car gamma is what? It is negative and constant because we have a downward sloping line. Between points D and F, the distance of car gamma is, uh, so between D and F, we have our positive and increasing area under that orange curve. And between points E and F, the distance of the car gamma is still increasing and positive. So that's how you can use line shapes to interpret information from your graphs. It's really important that you understand how the shape of a line can affect your results.